uh, one of the things that we always hear about is these Taraisms. Yes, <laughs> there's a lot of those. Can you think of any that you could share? Oh with gosh, us? one of my favorite was why are you shooting your water pistol when you've got a cannon? That's how she used to talk about Anita inside. Uh -huh. You know, why are you passing the ball into Anita inside? You know, uh -huh. she's the cannon. She's going to get it done. You know, why are you shooting your water pistol? Um, you know, I don't know why I remember that one, <laughs> but that's a good one. Well, she probably said them to make you remember them, right? Yeah, and she would tell stories about people. I know she tells stories about us now to the players um, about different things, you know, uh, like when Molly was a freshman and just, you know, couldn't even get the ball up the floor on Jennifer or Sonia, and, you know, but then she turned out to be the MVP of the Final Four. I mean, just things like that to try to motivate people and make them feel like, you know, People have been in that situation, you know, someone's come from what Molly did to being the MVP of the Final Four. Um, but yeah, we used to write them down. I, I think I wrote them down my senior year. I think I may have given them to Tara in a oh. book or something. So uh -huh. she might even have a book full of them. But she, um, yeah, and sometimes you could tell they just kind of came out of the blue and we'd all kind of giggle, <laughs> try not to laugh uh, too loud. Well, well, tell us about winning a Final Four. In fact, you were on... You're, you're kind of different because you went I'm on four out of five well, let's times see. going to the final four. And why don't you tell us a little bit how you got that extra year in there? Well, I got the extra year. Uh, so my junior year, um, the start of my junior year, I had a really difficult sophomore year. Um, not so much basketball, but just school. Um, you know, I did pretty well my freshman year. Um, at Stanford and you know felt pretty good and in my sophomore year there just a lot of things didn't go really well for me um, I was doing hum bio major which is you know one of the hardest brutal. majors very brutal major and just you know it was killing me it was killing me and I think one thing now you know as you get older and you look back on things and you said gosh you know why didn't I just you know after the first quarter I should have said you know maybe this isn't for me maybe I should major in something different and I think because when you're young and, and you told people, oh, you know, I think I want to go be a physical therapist, so I need to take come bio, and it's, you know, that's what you have to do. And I, I just think I got caught up in that, and I didn't really do what was best for me. I just was kind of blindly going forward and just saying no, kind of stubbornly. Um, and it just was, it, it made a very difficult year for me. And so um, I didn't have a great summer. I didn't feel like I worked very hard basketball-wise. And when I came in in the fall of my junior year, we were doing conditioning, preseason conditioning, and I was clearly miserable, clear to the coaches. Um, and so Julie Plank, who was assistant at the time, took me aside one day and said, you know, you don't have to do this. You know, if you're so unhappy, you know, you don't have to do this. And I just broke into tears. And I, I think just the fact that she said it to me, she said, it's okay, you don't have to. And I was like, oh, you know, it was just, it was, you know, I just felt so much better. And so then I went to Tara and we talked about it. And she said, you know, if you want to take this, take a red shirt this year, because the year had started. So really they were obligated to pay for the year. But um, what I did was I worked off my time, my scholarship basically as a, a, a trainer. So I was a student trainer and I, so the great thing was I still got to see all my best friends every day, but I just didn't have the basketball part. And so then I sort of got to be a normal student to see what that was like, you know, in a way, because they would go off their trips and I would be here. And um, of course, I picked the year that they win the national championship to take my red shirt and not be part of the team. But um, I think it was good for me personally. Um, act, you know, it must have been good for the team. We had a lot of things happen that year. Um, and then they end up winning a national championship, and I think all those things were for the best that happened. So uh, in the spring, I went into Tara's office and sat down and said, you know, wow, you know, I had a really good year off, and I, you know, we kind of were laughing about the year that I picked to take off, that, you know, they win the national championship, and I said, but, you know, if I would really like to come back. And she could have said no. I mean, she could have looked at me and said, you know, sorry, you had your chance, and no. Uh, you know, I let you have a year, so now you're on your own. But she said, no, the door was always open. You could have come back anytime. That, <laughs> for me, was a big, big thing. So, mm -hmm. well, that still makes me <laughs> well, cry she, when I think about she it. She had a lot of faith in you. She had a lot she of did. support. And she saw a lot of tangential characteristics right. that make you uh, what you are today. Right. So, that was... You know, for her to do that for me was a huge thing. So I was like, oh, you know, that summer I worked so hard. Of course, I killed myself running and got stress fractures 
So in the fall, I had to miss games because of these stress fractures, but I was just so um, elated to be on the team again. And my teammates accepted me, no questions asked. So And you got voted captain. And I got voted captain. So, you know, and that year we went to the Final Four, and that was Trisha and Sonia's senior year. That was the class I came in with. Mm -hmm. And so um, went to the final four. Didn't didn't quite make it to the final game, but it was close. We had a lot of things injury wise yeah. uh, that year that happened. And then um, then the next year, when everyone thought we weren't going to be very good, yeah, because I was the only senior and we were very young. Um, we just Val Whiting, Val Whiting on the team. Yeah, yeah. we had a wonderful one. Molly Goodenbauer, and Angela Taylor, and you know we had Anita Kaplan. And that was a great team. And um, so you know that was a big deal. I mean Tara. You know, I don't think people know that about Tara sometimes. I mean, she gave me a great opportunity and she, uh, you know, she welcomed me back. So she didn't have to do that. And so I'm always very thankful that she did that for me. And there must have been a reason for you coming back because you guys all ended up winning again. And I know, you did. You do, right? Yeah, well, I, I did. But I, I think, um, you know, I, I just came back and I was refreshed and I was, you know, I understood my role in the team, and I think Tara realized it's good to have people that know what their role is and understand what needs to be done. And I think she felt that I, I knew that. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what probably makes a team click. Not only is the team chemistry, but it's yeah, an understanding and an acceptance of being a role player. Right. And understanding your roles as you go Right. Along. You know, I was never going to be, you know, I'm never going to, was never going to be a Jennifer AZ. And I was fine with that, you know. And, um, but I knew that I could make other people work really hard uh, so that they could be what they needed to be and so mm -hmm. the team could be what it needed to be. And, um, it and I'm certainly really well. sure you were also a very good role model as well for them. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what, you know, that taking that year off, I don't know what everyone sort of thought about it. I mean, they all, I mean, we talk about it now, you know, we all get together every once in a while and talk about um, things that happen and, you know, we talk about it and they never even, you know, they just like, yeah, you were unhappy and that was okay. <laughs> they didn't, you know. And you figured it out. And I figured it out. So, and I was glad that I could stay at Stanford and figure it out. Well, I think it's kind of interesting for me to hear this part because I, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that about the academics because you, you were on the all-academic team. I was, right? so and I worked it, it out. <laughs> so when I was hearing you talk about that, I was like, well, wait a second. Yeah. You know, she's one of the smartest players on the team. Yeah. She's been all-academic. In fact, you were all-academic in high school, right, on the third, mm -hmm. second or third team mm -hmm. there. So we're talking about a very bright right. young woman. Well, I think a lot of it was, um, you know, I went, grew up in West Virginia. I went to public school there, and I, you know, had a great education there, but... Stanford is was, was very difficult, and I just wasn't, you know, things were very easy for me in high school. Things came easy for me, and when you get to Stanford, it doesn't come as easy anymore, and I think some of my study skills weren't great. I think freshman year, I did okay, because I wasn't, you know, wasn't into the meat of my major, and once I got into the meat of it in Humbayo, and that's the weeding out right. <laughs> kind of thing, um, I guess I didn't realize I was being weeded out. <laughs> I didn't quite catch on to that. So, um, but it was okay because actually once I got into my upper division classes, when I could, could focus on things I was interested in, I did very well. Mm -hmm. And so it was just kind of getting through that sort of dark time, um, you know, probably of sophomore year. Slump. Yeah, and then the sophomore slump. I mean, it's, it's a tough year for everybody because um, you're kind of figured out what your major is going to be and you're taking a lot of your core classes and it, it can be very difficult. So, um, you know, I was just happy to, to come out the other side and do well in school and I figured it out. I figured out how to study what I needed to do. Um, you know, I was a pretty good at budgeting my time, but I wasn't great about knowing exactly what things I really need to concentrate on so that on the tests I would do well. And actually, my current husband was very helpful <laughs> to me in uh, those things, you know, because we met freshman year and um, he was, he's very good at that with his tests. Uh -huh. I used to laugh because he would, honestly, I don't think he went to his history civ class all of freshman year and still got like a B plus. Uh -huh. And I said, how do you do that? And he goes, well, I just know what's important to study. And I was like, oh, you need to show me that. <laughs> well, I <laughs> guess he showed that? you more than just studying. Yeah. <laughs> he ended up uh, Yeah, exactly.